This area is unique oceanographically and hydrographically because it's at this point is, is where the Gulf Stream and the Labrador Current come together. Um, and what that causes, the confluence of those two major currents, um, is you get cold, nutrient-rich water meeting this warm Gulf Stream current that's coming up that, that uh, basically can stimulate growth. And, and so what you have is an incredibly productive area located specifically right off Cape Hatteras here. There is another reason for scientists to be interested in the point. Mobile Oil Company has announced intentions to drill an exploratory well here. The proposal calls for a drilling platform held by eight massive anchors. 3,000 feet of pipe would be needed to reach the well, which would then extend up to two miles into the ocean floor. An intense debate has arisen over what impact such a project would have on the ocean ecosystem. The team of scientists on this expedition plans to establish baseline measurements of the area so that any future disturbance of it can be more easily detected. As we start down, our view changes rapidly. Available light becomes only blue. For the first 600 feet, there is still enough light to see something. But by 800 feet, it's almost completely dark. Then we must use the exterior lights. The water here is so thick with nutrients and organisms that a constant blizzard of this material engulfs us. It looks much like a fierce snowstorm and in fact has been named marine snow. Okay, we're on the bottom. The depth there is uh, 2746. 2746. Temperature is 6.0 degrees. 6.0 degrees. Visibility uh, right now is about 12 to 15 feet. Stand by for the current. When we see the bottom, it proves to be just as rough as previous dives have described it. Yet from our submersible, we can see only a small part of the sea floor. Recent sonar mapping over many square miles now gives us a big picture. These computer images reveal a deeply scarred landscape. In these submarine canyons, there is certainly no lack of marine life. Mobile Oil Company, when they, when they argued that this place was a perfect place to put a well, argued, part of their argument was that there's no live, quote unquote, live bottom located here, which in, in a scientist vernacular is actually a uh, hard bottom reef with attached corals and algae and that sort of thing. In actuality, this is probably some of the livest bottom you'll ever find. We're seeing uh, as many as 120,000 animals per meter squared in the sediments here. Uh, that's, that's equivalent to just about any estuary, inshore area you'll ever see. Um, the water column has got more types and numbers of animals than some of the people who have been diving out in here submersibles for 20 years have ever seen. So it's unquestionably a live area. The bottom-dwelling community makes up the Benthos, and it's this area that Tom Bailey is concerned about in the event of some man-made disaster. The things that oil platforms and oil tanker spills and nuclear waste dumping and that sort of thing potentially affects are the things that live particularly in the bottom, because those things are stationary, and they, they can't run away, you know, and the water doesn't carry them away, and the water tends not to dilute a lot of the stuff that's heavy and just falls to the bottom. And the benthos is a, an integral part of the whole ecosystem. So if you start, and it's like any ecosystem, if you remove one of the, the major components of the ecosystem, it's going to affect the whole thing. The steep ridges and low visibility make it inevitable that we will bump into a wall now and then. Fortunately, these walls are soft. These sediments are a collection of the constant marine snow that has been going on for thousands of years. Finally, we're back at the surface, and the crew goes into action to retrieve the submersible.
After four hours coiled inside the rear compartment, it's good to be able to stand up once again. I'm going. Gosh, it was freezing. We had difficulty taking chorus because we couldn't see well enough to grab hold of them, and you can't see what was going in the bottom. But we, we got uh, three chorus here, um, one definitely from Firm Sediment, which was a very interesting place. When you would bump into the, uh, the, the top topography of the convolutions on the bottom, tremendous uh, avalanches yeah. of silt would roll down. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Yeah. Which shows how vulnerable that seafloor is oh. to disturbance. The samples taken here will be analyzed for fossils, for trace metals, and for living organisms. Well, those sediments are very rich in organic matter. And that organic matter is the food which nourishes the organisms that are there. And um, this is telling a story, um, or fits in as part of the story, of what's going on in the whole area, where we have material that is leaving the continental shelf going across the slope and then down into the deep sea in this area. And the organisms are living off the food which is being carried by on a conveyor belt, um, if you will, um, and is bringing this turbidity down the slope. And this movement of material is also probably causing the erosion of the canyons, which we see with all this bold morphology. Each dive of the ceiling reveals just a little more of the deep ocean. Many such dives will be needed to get a complete picture and this type of research will really never be finished. But to those involved, it's the most important kind of research there is. The deep ocean is, is the biggest ecosystem on the planet. Um, the average depth of the ocean, take, all oceans taken together, is 4,000 meters, meters. And our submarine goes to about 1,000 meters. So we're talking a quarter of the average depth. You know, who knows what, what's out there? I mean, we don't have the facilities, the equipment, or the funding to, to make the equipment to go down and really look at what's down in the deep part of the ocean. So in that context, yeah, we don't know very much about what's going on in the deep ocean. And it is the largest ecosystem on the planet. My dive aboard the Sea Link was a privilege and a fantastic adventure, over all too soon. But for the scientists who ride the submersible to the ocean's deep frontiers, their work is just beginning. They will take their samples and volumes of data back to the lab. They will analyze and study. And their work will eventually help chart a new course for our return to the sea.